Psychological thrillers like Psycho, okay? Then it was the blood and gore stuff, Herschel Gordon Lewis, movies like that. Then it went back to the monsters, Alien, Predator, okay? Then the psychological thrillers again, The Hand of Lux and Cradle. Then it became a gore fest again when Scream came out, you know? I don't know what trend we're in now, you know, or what trend is going to be popular 10 years from now. So that's a difficult question. It's hard to predict that stuff. What about the, um, like the trauma films? They seem to be this other world. I know, Poltergeist and all those things. Uh, I know Lloyd Kaufman pretty well. That guy, he, he's, a, he's a phenomenon. He just, you know, he was a Chinese history major. And the yin and yang is very important to him. Even when I was at a festival with him and he ordered a pizza, jalapeno and pineapple. So here's the hot jalapenos counteracted by the pineapple. It's the yin and yang. His whole life is like that. So uh, his movies are a whole different uh, category, I think. You know, he, he, he's doing it. He just finished uh, Nukem High 2, I think, is what uh, I just heard about in Canada over the weekend. He had a booth there, you know, and uh, he wasn't there, but his, his, uh, in, uh, his workers, who I know very well, tell me that that's why he wasn't there. He's off finishing Nukem High. Return to Nukem High 2 or something. So his movies are always, there's an audience, you know, he hasn't, his, his movies aren't really released in theaters, so it's a whole right. different, you know, ball game for him. I think they start just a, a releasing the, um, um, uh, what is it, Toxic Avenger play. Oh, yes. I theater. saw yeah. people are posting on Facebook showing their tickets, and they're sitting in the front row, and they're expecting to get bloody, you know. Right. And they probably will. There yeah. was an Evil Dead play that a friend of mine uh, did the effects on and blood. It was like a war concert where they put people in meat grinders and blood shoots out on the audience, you know. So maybe this is something like that. I don't know. I haven't seen it. It seems like it seems like just going over the top um, that the fans. There's a certain kind of fan that really goes for the gore and yeah. loves that. It was like even back in the I guess eighties, Gallagher, that crazy guy was smashing one yeah, so yeah, they they just want to be a part of that. Right. Yeah. It's almost like uh, if you're insulted by Don Rickles, it's like an honor. You know? Right. You don't right. take it personally. It's like uh, they had a special on on Don Rickles. It wasn't a roast. It was just a tribute to to Don Rickles, and um, famous stars were doing testimonials. And Johnny Depp was one of them. He said, I've never been insulted by Don Rickles. You know, and then he went on to do his speech. So then he sat down and other guests came up. But when Don Rickles came up, he just laid into Johnny Depp. And Johnny Depp was like, oh, he was so honored that he <laughs> right. was insulted by Don Rickles. You know. So, but that's, I mean, it, it, his movies, the, the, there's gore, but there's so much comedy in, you know, in, in those things too. So, but he gets away with it, you know. And, uh, yeah, he's making a living. And uh, it seems like um, I, I like I like the uh, the kind of contraption horror. He, the 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 sex machine had that belt buckle. Right, right, right. Uh, that kind of stuff. It just like it comes out of out of left field. You're like, whoa, wait a minute, what's that? And then something, yeah, right, right out of Robert's mind. I mean, he he had that in uh, Desperado. Some of takes it out of a guitar <coughs> case or something. He says, I don't even want to know what this is. And uh, But they couldn't get it to work. So luckily for me, on Dust Will Drum, they got it to work, and I got to wear it. But as far as contraptions go, yeah, I mean, Saw made a big big use of contraptions, you know. Um, and that's the weird stuff. That's not something that you experience in everyday life, and that seems to be what was a success back then, you know. Uh, but I think they're lost. I don't think they know where to go. I mean, Walking Dead is the number one show on television. Yeah, and it seems to be more of like a relationship thing. They they interact, they they go through these 
little relationships. They kill a few zombies and they go back right. to 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 the right. Well, it's a soap opera. With, yeah, with zombies. You know. <laughs> um, have you um, have you got a a stack of un un just un acted on um scripts or ideas? Oh sure, or things? yeah, yeah. Everybody does. Everybody has a script. Um, I got a shelf upstairs of things that. Uh, people wanted to do and you know, we start getting ready for it and then it just falls apart because they lose their money or something. But that's common. That happens all the time. Um, unproduced stuff. I own like three screenplays that, uh, you know, if I lived in LA, I'd be out there knocking on doors every day. Perhaps I'd be working more. You know, but I'm fine. I take long vacations between jobs. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, it's, Pittsburgh's nice. It's laid yeah, back. Yeah. It's, Good. It's the most livable city in the country, according to Rand McNally. Yeah, it is, and it, it's the best city in the country. Like, they apparently Time Magazine or someone had voted it. Um, well, there was a New York Times article about the best pizza in the country was here in Pittsburgh at a place called Bread and Salt. Do you know about this place that was back here? Huh. It's right around the corner. It's out my back alley and on Pearl Street, the next street over. And he was there since January. The article came out in the summer, and every day he was packed. Huge line because of the New York Times article. Um, he's no longer there. The building had a plumbing problem, so now he's moved to New York. But um, what's the point? Um, the, the advertising that came out. Made it a huge success where he was, you know, struggling back there for a long time. But the New York Times said it was the best pizza in the country. What, um, do you, uh, you have your school? Yeah. And is that, um, uh, what part does that play in your, in your uh, career, your life? Is well, it, in oh, yeah, no, it's essential uh, to me. Uh, it's my financial independence. You know, it's in Manhattan, it's about 30 miles south of Pittsburgh. If you ever watch the, the sh this TV series Face Off, okay. every time that's on, at least five of those contestants are students from my school. Yeah. Last year, Nora, one of my students, won Face Off. So, and it's it's very much the way it is in the world. You know, they have to they have a deadline. They have to make create something and make sure it works and looks good. You know, and that's what it's like in the industry. So, Face Off is a good example, and that's what we teach my students. You know, uh, the school is 16 months. It's a degree program. Parents love that. Um, it costs about a half of what other schools charge in L.A. and Florida. You know, a half of what they charge for like four weeks or eleven, or four months or eleven weeks. But th we're not kidding around. It's sixteen months. You know, they come from all over the world. It's the number one school there is. So that's yeah, that's a big deal because when I was growing up, you couldn't learn this stuff. There was no place to learn it. You had to, and everybody, nobody would share their secrets except Dick Smith. Dick Smith passed away a couple of years ago. He was the greatest living makeup artist on the planet. You know, he did The Godfather, The Exorcist, um, you know, got, um, top, top movies as a makeup uh, guy. Um, but he, if you called him, he would share his secrets and then type it up and send it to you, you know. He would. So my oh, school great. does that. My yeah. school does that. My school is my uh, attempt to share the, the secrets. Um, I've done a little reading and it's it's I've read that you'd like to get people that went to your school to work oh, on sure. films. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I because I still get effects jobs. I don't do effects anymore. I'm concentrating on acting and directing. So I turn those jobs over to my lead instructor and then he the students have to bid on it. Groups of students, just like they would in the real world, you know. Uh, the best bid or the most talented students, you know, you know, get the job. Nora, who won Face Off, she's working constantly. There's been quite a few. We have an 84% placement as far as students go. And it's not just with movies. <clears throat> when the school first started, we thought we were training people to work in movies. But the training allows them to work in oh, so many places, toy companies, mask companies, theater, haunted attractions, dental labs. You know, uh, there's so many places. And then consulting uh, for those different areas yeah, as well. Yeah, actually, we have, we have a... We have someone at the school who interviews the students in their third semester and asks them what they think they're the best at. 
then C researches their hometown area to see where they can do that. So they don't necessarily have to go to Hollywood to work. They can go at least close to home. Um, there's quite a few places here in town, actually, as far as mass companies, haunted attractions, where students work all the time. That's good. And um, where, um, um, yeah, that kind of that kind of covered like a lot of ground. That's that's good. Um, uh, do you have any advice for um, anyone that would be in interested in going into horror or low budget that, that they could you know maybe they can't afford to, to go to a school or they can't leave their hometown they can't go in search well, that, of something. That happens a lot yeah that happens a lot. Um, I get letters all the time from you know there's a, a single parent single mother she has a child but she's very interested in makeup effects you know. So I would suggest um, <clears throat> Dick Smith's correspondence course. You know he, I said he passed away but his estate you can still get his course and it's everything. It's, it's, it's everything there is to know about makeup effects. You study at home um, and um, you buy your own materials. But some people need someone looking over their shoulder. Like that's what my school is all about, you know. Right. But they can't afford There's so many books out there too they can learn. But, uh, but that's the first thing. Every time somebody comes up to me, and this just happened last weekend in Canada at a, a convention, so many people came. You know, I gave them my school information, of course. But they said, how, are we, how, do you, how do you become a success? Well, there's no formula for success. But what works is you learn how first, learn how. I get letters from kids who they glued a sponge to their head and poured blood on themselves. And it's on a letterhead, Joe Blow's Special Makeup Effects Studio. He knows nothing, right. but he's formed a company and thinks he's, you know. So learn how is first. And then you photograph everything you do. And then you simply have to be consistently persistent in putting those photos in front of people that can help or hire you. you know? So, so you, I tell them never go anywhere. Graduation was a couple of days ago. My speech is always the same. I say it differently, but my speech is always what I just said. And not to go anywhere without your portfolio. I mean, you can put it on a flash drive when you're teaching. You can put it on your phone. You have your phone with you all the time. And you must do that. You must not even go to 7-Eleven without your portfolio because you never know when you're going to meet that person that can help or hire you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nora was on Face Off the day after she graduated. So she was showing her stuff to somebody, and that led to her success. Okay, so that's my advice. Photograph everything you do and put those pictures in front of people that can help or hire you. That's all. Great. Um, and... I'm here with uh, Tom Savini, and uh, thanks. My pleasure. Thank you.